I was grateful to discover live streaming as the opportunity to hit that button, jump in, get it done, and it's over. It's over. The moment the stream's over, it's done. You're like, oh my God, it's it's amazing. (laughs) Um, And that was the moment I needed. Uh, And now the beautiful part of this is now we can connect back full circle to what what was the original source of this was needing content to share your message, to share your journey online. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, it's your host, Jamar Jones, uh, owner of Forever Media. I'm also uh, a speaker and an author of a book called Change Your Circle, Change Your Life. And this is a special episode because I had to bring in my boy that's got so much knowledge and talent, uh, skill, and it's just a really great dude. I feel like, you know, the energy level that he brings to all of his work and everything that he does is just um, absolutely fantastic. So today I got a special, uh, special guest. But first, the Forever Podcast is all about business and things that are personal because business is personal. And we're going to be diving into some live streaming topics. We're also going to be diving into Travis's story. And then we're also going to be seeing, you know, where where is everything going you know we're in 2022 where is all this headed so uh without further further ado let's bring on my boy travis lochner uh from beast node and beast club yeah 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 yeah. what's up man (laughs) oh man so grateful to be here uh and genuinely stoked for this one that's not a not always the case jumping into these but i'm honestly (laughs) stoked so yeah i'm happy to be here man so i mean yeah we just i mean we keep it real and raw on the on these type of uh podcasts so first man what's going on in your life oh gosh oh man (laughs) uh this has been a difficult question to answer for a long while but thankfully uh post pandemic era have gotten a lot of clarity um in two specific lanes so one world that is operating is essentially the beast node uh, which is a content marketing studio media production house uh, that focuses on daily content marketing and the way that we arrive at that daily content marketing is by building out a signature show either a live stream or a podcast like this uh, and then being able to repurpose that pillar content into whatever platforms they need to hit in micro content so that came to fruition um, through the pandemic era as a high need to serve businesses and creators that just desperately need more content and better content Uh, and then the other side of my world is the beast club which serves individual creators and that's where we knock down all of the hurdles between ideas and reality. So we provide systems, templates, resources, education, um, challenges is a new thing we're doing here. Uh, And that's been a new lane that's cracking open specifically for individual content creators trying to monetize their personal brand uh, or just accelerate their creativity in an effective and efficient way. So those are the two worlds uh, I've been operating and kind of running here. Um, so and it just and hits, hits me, <laughs> you know, so you're, you're in the, you're in those two, um, sectors, business and creative. And so what kind of businesses, um, from the, uh, from the business side, like what, what kind of businesses do you like to work with when it comes to uh, that daily content creation? Sure. Yeah. So we've discovered a sweet spot of, of mid-sized businesses that understand the value of content marketing. Mm -hmm. but don't have the infrastructure or the systems for that high level consistency. So we shoot for those companies that uh, they have an existing product or service that they just need to share with the world. Uh, And then we use uh, this this media production, this media machine, uh, I call it, (laughs) to 
cultivate either an internal stakeholder, so like a co-founder, a VP, a CEO, uh, in that case, um, that represents the company well, or yeah. we bring in uh, somebody externally that matches their personality, okay. uh, the brand personality, and kind of cultivate the talent on their behalf. Um, yeah. So mid-sized businesses uh, that understand the value of content marketing, but just mm -hmm. haven't quite clicked to turn it on um, and full full steam ahead, uh, I guess, yeah, as, as yeah. they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Well, before we, I mean, before we dive too much into the business and creatives and, you know, all the stuff you're doing with community and let's, let's rewind back real quick. I just want just a quick snapshot. I want people to understand I'm really big on, on an understanding how people got out today because I think most people are trying to figure that out. They're trying to figure out how do I get there? You know, so somebody is looking at you either from a social side, family, friends. So what was your path to where you're at today? Oh man, this is a, <laughs> I think, I believe this is a lesson on perspective. Uh, because in this head, on this side of the camera, I still have that imposter syndrome of who the hell is this guy and who the hell does he think he yeah. is? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. my journey has been uh, it, adapting and evolving throughout the way, but I wanted to give the caveat that in my own head, I still don't think I'm there. Uh, and it really is a critical piece, I think, to emphasize the process or the journey rather than the product or or the destination um that's been a huge mental shift for me the last couple of years that really recalibrated things but um the primary chapters of my life uh have been uh once upon a time i was myspace famous um i wasn't trying to be <laughs> People don't we even may know have, it yeah, we may have to give like a, an entire historical <laughs> lesson to some viewers of what MySpace was, uh, but uh, I've pursued music production, self-learned, self-taught music production when I was in like middle school, high school, started sharing the journey on MySpace, and it blew up uh, faster than I even, like, I didn't even know what it was, what the internet was, the potential for business and audience and everything. I was just discovering creation and sharing it with the world. And the mistake I made in that journey <laughs> was <It is. laughs> staying on a single platform and investing 100% everything, the whole, all your eggs in one basket. And I thought at the time, I didn't know what life was before MySpace, so I just thought it was going to be a thing forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. It totally was not. So where a lot of other people use that platform to build an audience and then a YouTube channel and then a website or a mailing list, I just was all in on MySpace only. And eventually, a little little old thing called Facebook came along and <laughs> little just thing. Was stomped <laughs> out every, oh yeah, I guess here we go again. Yeah, <laughs> round two. Um, but that was what actually was like eventually the MySpace killer. So I had cultivated this audience and mm -hmm. within a matter of like three to six months, the whole thing disappeared. All gone. Ghost Town, absolutely no way to really tap into that platform or that audience again. Right. Everything I had worked on kind of just disappeared in general. Um, and Ooh. I had to make the eventual decision once I started kind of growing up. Um, it's extremely difficult to monetize uh, music and entertainment careers, as as I'm sure many, many people are familiar with. Um, it's not an easy thing to do to mix business and art. Um, and in my head, that was my best shot, my best opportunity. So I started pursuing 
the business world instead uh, because it was just not sustainable to pursue a music or entertainment career anymore, especially starting from scratch again. So I discovered entrepreneurship. This was chapter two that just really recalibrated everything in my world of understanding I could tap into that creative vein in a new way. And now I can build a brand, build a community. Um, So I built a a cannabis company right during around like the the green rush, uh, they called it, of of Colorado. (laughs) Is that what they're Um, calling it? The green rush? Is that is that a it was like a, it was like maybe a media headline type of thing but when like yeah. the, uh Colorado and Washington or Oregon whoever uh legalized at the same time they there was like yeah. yeah this this mad rush for like the the legal cannabis industry right um right. and i saw a void for building a brand that was uh f- everything i saw in the in the space was like this very Cheech and Chong, like Bob Marley, <laughs> Rustaman, like like yeah, type yeah. of stoner stuff. And what I saw, I knew like yeah. my parents and like doctors and lawyers and like high level people that enjoyed cannabis. And I was like, well, that's kind of weird. Um, the, the only thing I see is this polar opposite side that you see in head shops and stuff. So sure. Sure. Uh, I built out a brand for responsible, respectable cannabis consumers and that community building that messaging that uh brand development was really what resonated with me of like that's when it clicked of like oh okay there's really something you you can can do here yes exactly and building that so uh just went all in on that followed the signals uh eventually sold that company converted into uh basically just an advisor role for that and that was how i discovered the agency side of everything of now instead of doing that for your own business your own brand how can i do that for other companies and that gave put me in basically the creative director position um where i just learned anything and everything content marketing and digital channels and email and social um and kept really busy for a long time grateful for all of that and then the pandemic hit so <laughs> when we I'm finally so had some momentum get. going <laughs> yeah uh this this little uh, pandemic thing came along to sw- sweep things up uh, uh yet right. again so right. When that hit, I had one more recalibration period uh, that had led me to building out this content studio and serving these creators. I finally had a chance to breathe. I finally had a chance to like think about what I actually want rather than just yeah. what do you keeping want to do? busy yeah. day yeah. to day to day. And gotcha. that was the last catalyst that led me here to chapter three was getting a moment to breathe recalibrate and find the lane this Mm -hmm. is the lane i was supposed to be in all along because for the first time ever uh all my prior skills my prior interests and a specific market demand are all hitting a convergence point right here and that's where the sweet spot is that's where i want people to discover um because that's where the magic is at yeah, I, and I think this kind of goes right back to where you, where you started, man. Like you started by saying it's perspective, it's enjoying the journey. Um, everybody's not gonna know exactly where they're gonna end up, you know. Like I didn't even looking back, like when I was in high school, I could I could never imagine myself at where I'm at today. That's where I feel like we have a very similar story within entertainment and transitioning to the business world out how to do that for others. And it's, it's just cool to see someone's evolution um, and what that process is. And, and it's like these, like, as you were explaining, it's almost like little triggers were, were happening trigger moments, almost mm-hmm. like, um, you know, things that you were, you were doing, 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 and then boom, trigger moment. And then at the core, you know, content, and then you were doing that back in MySpace, you know? So, so it's like everything kind of comes, comes back full circle, but it's like you've evolved over all that time. So, but you might be, 
you know, just in that journey spot where it's like you're waiting for that trigger moment to happen. You're waiting for, you know, you to learn that key piece to really turn it up a notch. So as you got to be patient, you have to have perspective and you got to enjoy the journey. Like I want to do more though, but then I'm like, oh no, I did, you know, this is pretty, pretty incredible. So, um, yeah, thank you for sharing that story. I, I want to dive into uh, live streaming real quick. And then, then I want to do, do some stuff in some future, you know, uh, where is this all going? So live stream, I feel like you have, I follow a lot of different people on LinkedIn and stuff. And um, I feel like you would just have this very unique approach to the live stream. Why do you invest so much time on live streams? Oh, man, this has been a game changer for <laughs> my world. So uh, I actually just posted about this today. Uh, so under this hood of this crazy little head uh, over here <laughs> is a... I'm scared of going under the hood, man. I'm an, so scared. <laughs> it's an absolute just mess of, of varying insecurities, uh, which translate into limitless perfectionism so mm. when mm. i pers when oh, i an initially pursued content creation and doing the online content thing and linkedin thing mm -hmm. i was told or saw the standard was recorded video concept sort of very old school concept of video production you script out a video prep it write everything that you need to to record actually right. record it in one two ten twenty takes in my case <laughs> uh and then you're still not even done you now take that recordings and you go to the editing process and this is where this is where content dies <laughs> is when people especially for perfectionists especially for that exactly exactly man, uh, you will teeter and tinker with that stuff uh, like all day long like a dwarf in the middle yep. middle of and the workshop yes <laughs> yes a hundred percent hundred percent and this problem uh i don't think i'm alone in this problem um so i pursued this version of content creation and it crushes my soul it crushes my soul i i fire up the lights i turn on the camera the the dogs are looking up at me like what the f is this guy doing like what is he doing in here and that was that's only half the battle and then i never get the edit done because there's ten thousand other things i see or want to do in my yeah. head and finally Finally, one time I discovered live streaming and the closest equation that I can compare it to is like uh, either improv comedy, uh, something I've dabbled with, uh, or game day. I grew up playing hockey and it's just it's very oh, much a, a, ga a game day experience of you have no option but to show up and perform. Uh, there's no right. excuse to right. say, hey, well, maybe I can uh, maybe I can sharpen my skate one more time. Like I uh, maybe I can. Yeah. And yep. that's the editing process that it holds us time. back. Yep. So I was grateful to discover live streaming as the opportunity to hit that button, jump in, get it done. And it's over. It's over. The moment the stream's over, it's done. You're like, oh my Press God, it, it's amazing. It's <laughs> um, and that was the moment I needed. Uh, and now the beautiful part of this is now we can connect back full circle to what, what was the original source of this, was needing content to share your message, to share your right. journey online. And now the, my entire business runs around this premise we can use that show, that stream to produce and clip and edit and repurpose content that can now land in those platforms you originally wanted to hit. Mm. And that was what clicked in my world uh, after seeing the success of the input to output ratio, basically the amount yeah. of energy and, yeah. and anxiety on the yeah. input uh, versus the yeah. level of output. I have more content 
than I'm literally able to post right now, um, yeah. which is a position I never thought I would be in. Um, so that was the biggest piece for me to really discover that creation process, a new version of that creation process where it's yeah. done all in one. Uh, you can improvise in the moment. There's plenty of room. You can bake flexibility into it or you can bake structure into your productions. It's a matter of how you want to craft yeah. that experience. So that yeah, was the biggest piece for me was to genuinely discover that I could create content without going through that whole anxiety loaded process like, of recorded video. Yeah, that's um because for most people, you know, I would say that live streaming and podcasting is your solution when it comes down to how how do I create content quickly, efficiently, and get it out there, get it out the door. Runs up, right? You know, yet you're at some point where it's like I have so much content, I can't even post all of this stuff. Um, you know, the only thing is with with podcasting, there's a limit of there's an element of production that happens in there. Um, with live stream, you literally can just press record on it um, and and get it going. But I think those two mediums, those two um, um, avenues that you can go can produce so much content. Because I mean, you know, especially people that are are the opposite of you, Travis, that are maybe in the like, hey, I'm afraid of the camera. I don't want to, you know, I don't have anything to talk about. It's like you got stuff to talk about. Your problem is that you're a perfectionist and you want to just dive into all this stuff so much where it's like, it's got to be perfect to get this mm -hmm. out. But really, um, it, these two solutions are really good um, for, for people to consider, but also just businesses. I mean, the main thing is like, oh, we got to think about all the topics to post on social. We got to think about this. You know, what are we going to do with that shoot? We got to do pre-production. Live stream and podcasting is your solution um for that i mean just a hundred times over until something else comes up <laughs> and then we'll be talking to that and actually that's the perfect segue into this next part so travis i want to do something different with you man i want to do something different because you got a lot of knowledge um but i want to i want to i want to um do this in small concise bite-sized uh bits i'm gonna rattle off so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go and i'm just gonna rattle off future things that are going to happen and i want to hear your quick hot take on each one of these okay all right so, so here we go perfect first one community where's it going digital digital is where it's going uh hybrid will be the part two of that i think we what we learned in this mm. pandemic is people are desperate for connection and we lost a lot of the platforms of that connection uh large conferences events um that used to be massive thousands of people coming across the country we aren't going to see that anymore uh or in the near future it's going to be digital homes and hubs that people mm -hmm. want to connect on and small scale events that are catered to more specific audiences rather than serving everybody all at once. That's what I see. Mm. Esports. Esports is uh, uh, first word is pioneer. That's what comes to mind. I think if anybody wants to have a successful media or content or digital strategy, follow what esports are doing they mm. are crushing it as far as community building they are crushing it as far as sponsorship and advertising revenue they are crushing it as far as community growth and audience based segments if you want to see what's going to work and what's going to be happening follow esports they are the ones innovating and leading the path at the moment 100 percent nfts NFTs uh, overhyped currently at the moment. Uh, I believe the technology is functional. The technology is useful. Blockchain is a neutral technology the world needs. Uh, in its current okay. state, I think probably 90, 95, 97 percent of the stuff that's out there is 
speculative with minimal uh, functional utility attached to it. So the portion mm. I'm most excited about on NFTs actually has nothing to do with cutesy little art and doodles and characters. Okay. It's yeah. actually membership access. Uh, if you think of stuff I like see. the the black card and stuff that exists right now that mm -hmm. gives exclusive access, that's where NFTs are going to be super valuable, in my opinion. What about video? Where's it going? Video, video, uh, short form video is going to amplify in value. One of the things that we've uh, adopted under the hood of our operations and our post-production process is mm -hmm. the concept of uh, information density. Mm. How much value can you provide in the shortest amount of time? Those that answer that question uh, in an effective way are going to do really well in the future of content. So I'm seeing a splinter of short form video is going to be way more valuable. And then the opposite end of the spectrum, long form live streaming and real time experiences and interaction is going to be the counterpoint. Conferences, trade shows and events. And you kind of touched on this on community, but I just want you to focus yeah. on that topic where's it going uh i'm seeing i'm seeing smaller scale uh and more uh of a higher frequency of events might be one of the ways that we can compensate for not being able to get ten thousand people in the same area maybe we okay. have to have a, a denver version and then a miami version and then a uk version rather than just throwing it all in in new york yeah. and hoping everybody comes <laughs> um that's okay. where that's where i'm seeing it head okay what about social i believe uh the value of social will be one of the ones that as we approach this next era it depends how this metaverse vr ar world plays out but i anticipate I it's gonna be They're already oh, in okay it. okay <laughs> no nice. no okay we're cutting ahead to the, the <laughs> finish line here um but anyways i'm i'm seeing uh social media was will evolve uh i think we're gonna start seeing more decentralized or slightly less overlord style <laughs> social platforms um and yeah, now that yeah. now that i okay. think people people are starting to realize like oh my god like how much does facebook know about me and my family and my dog and my income and yeah. everything else uh, that i didn't think i was sharing uh the more people understand that the more we're going to move to i think decentralized social media uh however the value of it tapping right back into that need for social connection, uh, the value of it, I don't think is going to disappear. Okay. Last one. If you had to develop a six month marketing plan for 2022, what would be your top three initiatives you would, you would implement? Step one, cultivate a extremely clear brand strategy that's a hundred percent based on the persona you are trying to reach mm. we selfishly ruin and get in our own way very often by trying to serve what we think is best for our company or our business or 100%. our brand yeah yep. uh, so starting with a brand strategy that 100 percent relentlessly is focused on the persona you need to reach uh step two is plugging or creating a internal stakeholder that represents that brand that message that vision people okay. work with people even if it is a company they hire at the end of the day the reason they come to that company is because of the people there cultivate an internal stakeholder that can become a spokesperson a host a influencer for uh your brand and then the last piece of that is 
by uh, maybe a biased uh, suggestion here, but <laughs> building out your show and your content strategy, build a signature show that resonates with those first two pieces, that resonates with the personality you're cultivating mm -hmm. and with the buyer persona you're trying to reach. You can build a show that connects to that person you need to reach, saturating that buyer from every angle, every platform they're on, right. uh, eventually to the point where they uh, are either, when you reach out to them outbound, they're f already familiar with you, or even better, going entirely inbound and they're coming to you. Those would be the three pieces I would implement. Amazing, man. Personalized marketing. It's basically, that's the name of the game. You gotta start personalizing, you gotta start being human at our fingertips, <laughs> yeah. we can we can find things out pretty quick. So you can't fool us anymore. <laughs> Alexa is listening. <laughs> yeah. Google, Alexa is <laughs> listening. You can start the conversation. And that's why it's so powerful. Um, because you start it and you control it and people will come to you for that. Uh, and you are part of that, which is going to build up your brand. And it's going to help and, and it's more personable um it's more relatable and it's more um attractive especially for talent you know they're going to want to work for you um so stop selling salary and, and position and start selling culture so thank you travis so much for being on the forever podcast man i feel like we could have went so many different ways <laughs> but you dropped so much knowledge and I, I was you know as you were talking i was like man let me do this rapid fire thing <laughs> Adam, you know, because we could we could have brainstormed and talked and stuff, but let me. There's so many ways <laughs> to to get messaging out there, to build an audience, to market yourself, brand yourself. Um, there's so many different avenues, but I feel like you have a couple of your go tos, but you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. But you're you're spending a lot of your time and energy on the ones that are that are serving you the best. Travis, where can people find you at? How do they get in touch? How do they get a hold of you, my man? I know you're busy. So, you know, you're probably going to be like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. Ignore. Ignore. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no this, uh, this, I mean, this is brilliant to what, what you were just mentioning. Um, I, I kind of think of structured innovation. So sticking with uh, continually testing and watching and listening at all times. Uh, and then under the hood, uh, I essentially always have one channel going that's working or in like the hot category or it's good, thumbs up, green light, whatever you want to call it. That's yeah. And test one or two channels. And then with that testing, you'll discover what are the other ones that are have those green light signals. Um, so that at least gives you a structured way to continue to move the needle on what's working. So that's what I would advise is pick one platform you love and one platform you wanna experiment on uh, and continually shift what that experimental one is until you find another one you love. Um, and in that context, uh, my platform to find me is on LinkedIn. So that's oh, yeah. the one that's working oh, yeah. uh, best for me for sure, uh, is to connect with me on LinkedIn, Travis Lochner, L-A-C-H-N-E-R. Uh, and if you're interested in joining our community, go ahead and hop to beast.club from any browser. Uh, and that'll go ahead and give you an email capture to jump in and join the party there. Sweet, man. Thank you so much for for hopping on to this, man. And um, yeah, we're going to continue to keep it rocking, man. I think we're going to be uh, chilling out in Florida soon, I think. Is that, is that the uh, are you swinging out? I got to. I got to. I have Of make, course, make, I haven't bought a flight happen. yet, but I got to. I got to. <laughs> we'll be there for a week, man. So, yeah. you know, we're going we gonna to make it pop. Love uh, it. Thank you so much for uh, being on the Forever Podcast. Everybody that's listening. Uh, right now and watching, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, um, to our Spotify, and we're streaming on all platforms, and definitely on YouTube as we're dropping this uh, this content. And definitely make sure to grab a copy of my book, Change Your Circle, Change Your Life. Uh, it's on Amazon. 
um, if you're trying to you know figure out where to go in this uh this crazy world until the next episode we go rocking peace Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell for more amazing content that we're gonna be putting out. And don't forget, you can change your circle to change your life.